Okay, uh, this is our next stop. It's called the 5050 Pit because it's off the 5050 Road. Kind of uncreative name there, but uh, it'll work. It's a good identifier. Anyhow, um, we are looking at some very nice basalt rock here. It's very, very hard. Um, great for making roads. Let's see, doesn't really break apart. This is a great pit. We use this pit quite a bit. That's one of the reasons why we have such nice roads up the Markworth. You can see it's breaks off in nice chunks. It, it, uh, it also, um, you know, has been experiencing some weathering here, which is what I kind of want to point out is all the fractures and cracks, you know, to go back to our kind of weathering conversation that we've been having throughout the quarter. Um, you know, you can even see there's moisture on these rocks and imagine it going in those cracks and freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing. And then eventually uh, breaking apart into chunks. And we'll come in here and we'll drill um, and put uh, explosives in there and blow a lot of this apart which will end up kind of in these bigger chunks like this. Or if you look over there, there's a whole pile of what we call oversized rock, um, one foot plus rock that, a lot of that is basically what came out of the blast. Um, you'll even get some of these smaller chunks as you can imagine. You won't get propane tanks though. Uh, that's people up here shooting and stuff, unfortunately leaving their litter. But you know, some of the, High, it, that edge over there has got more weathering to it, more fractures, more cracks. Where here you have more of a bigger chunks in the face. And so you can imagine when that stuff explodes off the side here that um, it makes different sizes of material. Uh, and I like to point out here too, this is a cool little area over here where, you know, we've definitely got some chemical weathering going on here with the iron oxides that are precipitating out of this piece of rock here. So there's definitely some kind of um, accumulation of iron in, in these rocks here. You can see the red edge. It's also um, got some sort of lichen growing on it as well. And some form of salt crystals two that are growing um, out of this rock as well. Uh, but you can see it falls apart. It's got a lot of redox reaction going on here and got some organisms breaking it down as well. There's some mosses on there. Um, plants, especially mosses, little grasses, lichen, they love to grow just about anywhere. So this is the 50-50 pit. Um, like I said, it makes really good rock. We'll go over here real quick and check out just kind of what product we get out of this type of pit here, out of the Markworth. Markworth has a lot of pretty good basalt in it, which makes really good roads, like I was saying, mostly because of its location we're going we'll see on tiger mountain and the raging river we have rock pits there but they are quite different and we'll notice the differences there when we get there but i just want you to check this out here this is the type of awesome rock that we get out of this pit the 50 50 pit in the Markworth. So that about covers this pit. We'll move on to the next stop. Okay, here we are at um, another rock pit. We call it the Round Rock Pit. I'm thinking you can guess why. Uh, quite different, we're still in the Markworth where, you know, we had a lot of volcanic uh, basalt igneous rock showing up there. 
um, in the other rock pit that we were at. But here, what we have is some sort of glacial moraine that dumped like a bulldozer, all this round rock into this area. This uh, quite possibly could be part of a large esker, which is a geologic term um, explaining uh, kind of a, a drumlin, which is another term, which is like a glacial mound. Um, they happen a lot in this area because of glaciation that happened here. And basically they're either lateral or terminal moraines of round rock like this, which is, uh, again, some type of glacial kind of alluvium. And uh, uh, you can find them in north-south hills, basically. Uh, you know, like Seattle is a great example of drumlins and, and how all the north-south, they're all north-south facing. And that's why it's difficult to get across Seattle and a lot of other um, towns uh, like that. And so here we've got uh, pretty decent material coming out of this rock, however, but it's just different to process. Uh, we uh, put it into a jaw and it's definitely different. It's, it's hard, but it's mixed with a lot of different other things. You can see that cut up there kind of all around rock and you've definitely got uh you know particles of silt and even uh maybe even some clay further down but uh so you get kind of a dirtier uh so to speak substance out of a rock pit like this and uh but however it's good rock it's uh easy to uh deal with because you don't have to blast it with dynamite and so you take out that whole process which can be expensive and timely um, process. So uh, if you can find an area like this uh, in wherever you're managing land, uh, it's, it's not a bad pit to use um, as a crushed rock or actually even ballast, which is what we put on roads below the surfacing. Um, and it works for really good material like that and this is uh, an example of a round rock pit.